Very important things to understand, beloved, because if we don't understand these things, confusion and not only confusion, but false teaching is going to arise, uh, arise out of these things if we do not recognize that authority that was given to the Apostle Paul by the risen, ascended Lord of glory, the Lord Jesus Christ, and that it superseded that authority of the twelve, and to him was given the foundation, or that is, the revelation of God's grace to give to us Gentiles. But not only that, beloved, the Apostle Paul was made the pattern for us to follow today. Now, I know there's a lot of objection to this idea that Paul is our pattern. And uh, a lot of uh, dear saints, sincere saints, want to try and say that the Lord Jesus Christ is our pattern. But how can the Lord Jesus Christ be our pattern in salvation? He was perfect. He wasn't the one who needed to be saved. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Savior. And he was not only, not only is he the Savior, but he is, he was, he is the sinless, perfect Son of God, God the Son. Therefore, he cannot be our pattern. He's our Savior. And uh, his, his perfection, his perfection in both when he was walking this earth and during the time he uh, uh, was communicating to the Apostle Paul, his perfection only uh, enhances our imperfection if we try to compare ourselves with him. And so, beloved, the Apostle Paul was given a pattern, or he was made the pattern for us to follow as believers in this dispensation of the grace of God. He was given the pattern for us in three areas of spiritual fullness, salvation, sanctification, and service. Isn't that interesting, beloved? Salvation, sanctification, and service. Now, the last two items, sanctification and service, are not to be confused with salvation. This is so important to understand because people confuse sanctification with salvation and, and they can also they confuse service with salvation, thinking that one has to do something for salvation today and uh, do something to maintain salvation. But this is not so. Salvation is based on something different than, than, than what our sanctification is and what our service is. And beloved, do not misunderstand. Do not get a mistaken idea that this idea of Paul being the pattern for us today is a man-made idea because the Apostle Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, tells us this in 1 Timothy chapter 1. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 16. Now, those of you who are out there in television land, those of you, I hope you have a pencil and paper ready so that you can write down these scripture verses and later on, go and check them out for yourself. Don't take my word for this. You check the, uh, set, check the scriptures out for yourself. Be the Bereans that, uh, that we all should be and search the scriptures daily to see if these things are so. Well, anyway, first, uh, first Timothy, first Timothy chapter one and verse 16. Look what he says here. Now, this, these aren't my words. This is the words of the apostle Paul. And are they, uh, and is this not the inspired word of God? If Paul is writing by inspiration of God here, then if what he is saying in the 16th verse is not so, God would not have permitted him to have said these things. But look what he says. 1 Timothy 1.16. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Boy, what a statement that is. You don't find any other person in Scripture, any other Bible writer in Scripture making such a statement as that that I am the one first. I am the first one saved. I have been made the pattern and henceforth, hereafter, for all those who should hereafter believe on him, the Lord Jesus Christ, to life everlasting. This is one of the reasons why, beloved, we refer to the Apostle Paul so much in our dissertations. 
And it's not because we're trying to make the, uh, the Apostle Paul something that he isn't. We all realize that the Apostle Paul is just nothing more than a man saved by the grace of God. The only person that we speak more of than the Apostle Paul is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And how important this is, because you see, beloved, the Lord, the, this book, this blessed book, the volume of the book is filled with him. It's about him from cover to cover. And so, beloved, we sing his praises constantly and we point to the cross constantly, pointing to his finished works and all the blessed things that he has given us as a result of his finished works on Calvary's cross, in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Yet, with the Apostle Paul, he gives us the perfect pattern for salvation. How is it that the Apostle Paul was saved? Was he saved in the same manner that we see that 12 apostles were saved? Or was he saved in the same manner that the Old Testaments were saved? Is this what we see, beloved? Let's, well, Let's not take my word. Let's check things out from Scripture. Let's see what Paul himself has to say about these things. First, let's look at 1 Corinthians <coughs> uh, uh, chapter 15. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is known as the resurrection chapter, a very important chapter. This, the entire chapter of 1 Corinthians is basically given over to the defense of the resurrection. And the apostle Paul he starts off, though, with the doctrine or the gospel of salvation. Uh, because, you see, beloved, the gospel of our salvation today is based on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, it's a three-part thing. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ, he died for our sins, he was buried in the ground, and then on the third day he rose from the grave for our justification and this is what we're going to see here in the first four verses of 1 Corinthians 15 look at what Paul says now in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 starting with verse 1 moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I declared unto you which also ye have received and wherein ye stand did you notice the the reference to himself here twice he meant makes reference to himself brethren I declare unto you, uh, uh, brethren, the gospel which I preached unto you. Isn't that interesting? And, and, and uh, um, he's making a declaration here. You know, a declaration is a very solemn statement, a very solemn public announcement. And he's making a declaration here of the gospel which he preached. And is this the same gospel that Peter preached in Acts uh, chapter 2 and Acts chapter 3. Well, we're going to see that in just a minute. But look at what, look at what he says here in verse 2. By which also ye are saved. Not only have we, have we received it and we, have, uh, we stand therein, but we are saved by this gospel. This gospel that I'm declaring unto you, that I've preached unto you, I'm saying unto you, he said, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Now, beloved, if this is the same gospel that the tracks, if this is the same gospel of salvation that our Lord preached while he was on the earth, and the same commission that he was, if he was laboring under that same commission that our Lord gave to the 12 apostles, as we find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's four segments to that commission. And we should ne never neglect all four of those different segments. But anyway, if, these, if this be the case, then why did the apostle Paul require special revelation? Why did he have... Why was it to him given something special? He says, for I delivered unto you, first of, first of all, that which I also received. He says basically the same thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 concerning the, sup the Lord's Supper. Uh, many want to say that the Lord's Supper is just another form of the Passover. But if this be the case, beloved, 
then why did he say, for I received of the Lord how you should have, how you